Here's an example of internal zoning boundaries and how it affects us every day through a process called gerrymandering. And gerrymandering is the process by which the government will draw its electoral districts. Imagine a state uh, that's a perfect square. The center of the, of the state consists of the capital city, the university, and generally speaking, people who are, are more likely to vote for party B, the blue party. People in this red area, in the rural areas of the state, are more likely to vote for party A. Now, let's see how different, con different districting patterns for congressional districts would impact the election results of, of a state that has this kind of population distribution. Here's case number one, the first districting solution. Here we divide the state into four districts. District one is the northwest corner of the state, District 2, the northeast, District 3, the southwest, and so on. Now in this case, we see that 80% um, of each district is covered, uh, includes people who are more likely to vote for the red party. So this is the 80% over here of District 1. They're 80% of the population, they're going to vote for party A. Now, 20% of District 1 in here is going to vote for Party B. So in this table for District 1, we see that Party A would get 80% of the vote, and Party B would get 20% of the vote. So the result of an election is that District 1 would vote, would elect Party A. Now, the same is true for Districts 2, 3, and 4, when we have this kind of districting system. Now, what about this kind of districting system. Here we still have four districts, but instead of having them split by the four uh, uh, corners of the state, we've instead carved out a district in the center of the state surrounding the capital city, and then we've made three rural districts surrounding that. So in this case, each of party one, two, and three, sorry, each of districts one, two, and one, two, and three vote 100% for party A and elect party A, but the population inside District 4 is 80% in favor of party B. Oh, sorry, this should be 80% and 20% in favor of party A. And as a result, party B would get a seat in the Congress. Now, this seems pretty obvious to you, but I wonder if you've seen that this is actually something that affects us here in Salt Lake City. So here's a map of Utah, the counties, and the three congressional districts. And over here you see Salt Lake County in the center of the state. What do you see about that? Let's zoom in on it. So the black line here is the border of Salt Lake County. And we see that the three congressional districts basically carve the city up like a pie. So you've got the northwest part of the county included in, in one congressional district. You've got the eastern half of the county over here included in this district, and then you've got the southwestern part of the county included in the southern district. And if we zoom back out, we can see that those districts extend all the way out into rural areas, unpopulated areas, and out into the uh, fringes of the state. Now, what do we know about, about the politics of Utah? We know that the democratic base of the state of Utah is basically concentrated within Salt Lake City, and with, with a strong conservative base basically everywhere else in the state. So what have the congressmen done by districting the state in this way? Well, they've guaranteed that the strong democratic core in the center of the, of the city is actually divided three ways and watered down, uh, their influence is watered down by including their vote with the largely Republican constituencies in 
the rest of the state. So they've, by design, gerrymandered these, these taken advantage of the modifiable aerial unit problem in order to affect their political will.